What is up guys? We are back again with another video and in today's video we are going to discuss cardio. Okay, we're going to discuss energy systems especially as it pertains to my particular training program because if you've been following along with the vlogs I've been doing the last video I did I essentially went through my resistance training program and I mentioned that at the end of my resistance training like the, the resistance training I do during the day I have some cardiovascular work right so we're going to get into this and we're going to go through why I have it set up the way I do and how that can be applied to your training right because obviously people do cardiovascular work for a number of different reasons whether it's just to contribute to you know overall calorie expenditure whether it's to work on a particular part or component of fitness or just for enjoyment you have to factor a lot of things in and then you can make a cardiovascular program that suits your goals and actually achieves what you're trying to set out to do because too often people just kind of go oh yeah cardio as if it's just one component or, or just one thing it's the exact same thing as saying like oh resistance training and thinking that it's one thing there's obviously a huge difference in how you approach your resistance training if you have a particular goal and the same holds true for cardiovascular training there's a huge difference in how you approach it if you have a given goal so let's actually get into this now right so this this is the thing you need to understand first of all right if you understand this and then you layer on a little bit of we'll call it practical stuff you're sorted for life right so this is essentially the energy systems the body has we effectively have three different energy systems we'll call them we have the atp pcr okay so that's atp you maybe have heard of that before and that's the the pcr component of that as well and then we also have uh, glycolysis you know which is we'll, we'll call it anaerobic stuff atp pcr is essentially anaerobic as well, well it's it's kind of a little bit uh more nuanced than that but that's that's for a different day so we have anaerobic glycolysis we'll call it here and then we have the aerobic component right so this is a little bit of a a, a hard diagram to decipher first of all but once you really get it you'll, you'll really understand that this understanding this allows you to more effectively program your cardiovascular work right so we'll go to the atp pcr first this this system essentially lasts from zero seconds to we'll call it 12 to 15 seconds traditionally people kind of say 8 to 12 seconds but that's because you know you're getting a, a huge bang for your buck initially and then it's dwindling and going down and down and down after about that kind of we'll say six seconds like you're still obviously quite high energy supply from this but it's only going down after that and then again once you get to around past the 10 second mark you know it's it's pretty non-existent right but so if you think of this the, the atp pcr system it's the kind of boom really quick you know really fast movement you know this would be stuff that lasts less than 10 seconds obviously enough and um, so if you're thinking like oh usain bolt sprinting you know that's less than 10 seconds that's all out he's pretty much using this system right however you have to layer on top of that that none of these systems work in isolation which is a, a common misconception kind of people think that like oh one to ten seconds that means it's purely atp pcr that's not true that just means that you know a higher uh, amount is being contributed to the, the workload from that system but if you do something which we'll get onto now for example in the the anaerobic uh or you do something that uses the anaerobic system you know you still are using the atp pcr system as a component of that so for example this this glycolysis you know we'll say this lasts whatever you want to think for this it, it, it kind of goes from that zero to 90 seconds to we'll call it two minutes you know that's kind of the time frame that most people would say you know zero to 120 seconds obviously the the earlier on you've got essentially two systems working in your your favor the the atp pcr and glycolysis and that's why you see this huge big magnitude like a, a huge contrib contribution of energy supply so this this system is really good for you know the, the shorter duration stuff and again after around the, the 30 second mark 30 40 second mark it slowly starts going down you get less and less energy supply uh, and it, it continues to go down until it's pretty much the same as the aerobic system then right and again the aerobic system is the other one which again kind of starts from anything anything from zero to forever right if you just keep moving and keep moving you're going to be getting more aerobic uh energy supply right you're going to be using the aerobic system more than the other systems right so it, 
it may seem a little bit complicated at first, but if you if you simply think of it like ATP PCR that lasts zero to ten seconds, uh, glycolysis or the anaerobic system that lasts we'll say zero to ninety seconds, and then the aerobic system is zero to 90 seconds plus you know and um, if you understand that you really start to understand how to program your training right if you're like okay well my uh, event your sport it lasts 30 seconds so you kind of think then okay so there's certain systems that i'm going to prioritize as a result however if you're like my sport lasts two hours then again certain systems you're going to have to prioritize However, it's not as simple as that. So we'll just get into a few different things and then you'll really see how to actually apply this to your, your overall training, your overall cardiovascular program design, right? So you also have to look into the specific adaptations you're trying to elicit, right? So you can't just think like, oh, my training is, or my sport or my goal is 10 seconds long. So that's what I'm gonna train. I'm just gonna train 10 seconds and that that's it that's that you have to think beyond that right the first thing you have to think about is like mitochondrial biogenesis this is one of the ways that cardiovascular training works it increases the amount of mitochondria you have in a cell and i know most people when you see a cell if you think back to like your biology education when you were a teen or whatever uh, you might see a picture of a cell and it has like one mitochondrion but that's not actually true there's hundreds thousands of mitochondria in the cell and again if you do cardiovascular work, one of the ways the cell, you know, adapts is that it increases the amount of mitochondria in that cell. So for a given cell, you have more mitochondria, which means you're able to have a greater energy flux, you know. So again, you're able to, you know, use energy more effectively for a given unit, you know, a given cell, right? So this is again, again, why people who exercise or whatever seem to have more energy, even though that would seem you know, converse to what you would expect, you would think, okay, this person is using up a load of energy day to day, so they should be more tired. However, the opposite is generally true. The person that kind of sits around all day and is more, we'll call it lazy or whatever, they, they feel more tired as a result. And that's one of the components of why that is the case, you know, this reduced mitochondria per unit. Well, I won't even say reduced, let's go the opposite. This increased mitochondria per unit of cell in the people that are doing cardiovascular training, right? So that might be an adaptation that you need for your sport. However, this isn't something that I would hugely prioritize because if you do pretty much any cardiovascular work, this is going to occur. However, you may want to do it in a specific manner, which we'll kind of come back to in a second. There's also vascular changes. You know, if you do a lot of aerobic work, a lot of anaerobic work, a lot of stuff that, you know, requires blood flow, you know, you are going to see vascular changes. If you see someone who is you know, an athlete. Actually, it's probably easier if you watch horse racing because you'll see the horses that, you know, they, they obviously do quite a lot of running and they just have this ridiculously impressive vascular system. Like you see these big, huge veins uh, on the horses. But obviously you see that as well in athletes that are doing, you know, cardiovascular training overall, you know. So again, there's, there's vascular tra changes that occur in response to training. And again, that might be something that you want to prioritize, right? And this is especially true in regards to the next point, which is local buffering capacity, right? And what I mean by that is your ability to clear uh, metabolic byproducts or handle acidosis. You know, might some people kind of go on like, or oh, the, the lactic acid uh, that accumulates. That's not necessarily true. It's buildup of hydrogens. Lactate is what's in the body. So lactate is actually beneficial, but that's a whole other story. It is uh, acidosis, however, and you know, you might want to have a an increase in the enzymes that deal with, you know, this this process here the ability to handle and buffer the the buildup of acidosis in that cell and again that might be a, a local effect as well as you know a systemic effect but so again you might prioritize your training as a result of that and we'll, well that'll make more sense when we come to the end and we start talking about exercise selection but all of those things you know you want to look into the specific adaptations that you're trying to elicit with your training you know what are you actually trying to do? Okay, so yes, you've, you've identified that there's a certain energy system that you're using pr potentially preferentially, you know? Um, there might be a, a specific energy system that applies better to your sport, or, you know, you know that you're weaker at, if that makes sense. You're like, okay, well, I don't have much of a gas tank. I just, you know, after about two minutes, I just I just can't do anything. I'm, I'm wrecked, you know? Whereas you're like one, zero to two minutes, I'm, I'm, unreal i can just keep going and going and going and then two minute mark and then it's 
all downhill for me, you know? So you might be like, okay, even though my sport is that long, you know, I might need to prioritize a different system. And this also applies to people that are, you know, just looking to burn calories, you know? And we'll come back to that in a second because that's more to do with, or choosing how to approach that is more to do with, you know, the overall energy contribution and fatigue that's going on and then also the, the nervous system. But we'll come back to that, you know? So again, looking at these again, the ATP PCR system will say zero to 12 seconds of energy you're getting from that. However, you have to factor in that that is being restocked by that aerobic system or by the aerobic system, right? And we'll say it's fully restocked after two minutes. And when I, when I say restocked, I mean that this ATP PCR system is effectively, you know, we'll say donating a uh, phosphate, right? And you know, the, the, the PCR component is, you know, creatine. This is one of the reasons that creatine works, allows you to get an extra rep or two. However, you know, once, once you've used up this, the, the components of this, you know, you actually have to then restock this from other parts of the body, right? And the way it's being restocked is through the aerobic system. All right. So that means that even though this, this, uh, component of the energy system is only zero to 12 seconds, it is being restocked by the aerobic system, right? And this is why, you know, you'll do something, you go all out for 10, 20 seconds, and, you know, you're like, <gasps> you're, you're gasping for air, right? Even though if you think of things like kind of more theoretically, and you've never done cardiovascular work, you would think the system, the aerobic system, would make you more out of breath, right? And which is obviously true in the in the longer term, right? But, you know, you, you do have to restock this using the aerobic system, which requires oxygen. So, you know, heart rate, breathing, everything goes up, right? So that's actually really important to understand, especially as you actually program your, your cardiovascular work. Because you have to think, again, it's not just, you're not just going in and doing one 10-second bout, you know? That's, that's not what you're likely to be doing, you know? Uh, you're likely to be doing repeated, bouts of you know 10 seconds or whatever it is you know this also holds true for the anaerobic system we've got you know zero to 90 seconds again you could say two minutes um of energy contribution and then the metabolic waste products are also being cleared aerobically right so again whatever is being accumulated in that this acidosis that occurs even the lactate that occurs you know this is being shuttled out uh using the aerobic system right so Again, you have to keep that in mind that the aerobic system is playing a part. And again, if we go back, this all makes sense when you can, when you think that at the entirety through all of the seconds, like whatever time point, the aerobic system is active, right? It might be doing different things at different time points, but it is active throughout, right? So we'll say at the zero to 10 seconds point, it's slow. It's, it's increasing its uh, contribution to like its energy contribution, but the majority of the work it's doing is, you know, kind of clearing or rather restocking this ATP PCR system. And same with then the glycolysis, you know, when it's working here, you know, more of its role is kind of metabolic, uh, you know, clearing, you know, and then if you were to stop after that, you know, it's still going to be working on those two things, restocking this and clearing this metabolic, or metabolic waste byproducts, whatever you want to call them. Um, or if you were to continue exercising, it's going to be contributing more and more and more to actual energy supply, you know, um, and then with that as well, again, the aerobic system, we'll say zero seconds, I should have an S in there, zero seconds plus of energy contribution, and it effectively, you know, clears itself, it, it contributes back to itself. Um, so that you need to keep in mind, you need to keep all that in mind. And again, it seems a little bit esoteric at the moment. But once you start seeing things put into practice, it, it makes sense. The thing I want to really emphasize is this repeated efforts uh, thing, because people look at certain time points in their exercise, in their training, in their sport or whatever, and then assume that that's the system they that's the only system they need to work on right and what this is very apparent in people who program for you know field sport athletes people will look at the fact that you know they do a lot of sprinting right and they'll be like right so we need to get our sprints really really improved and again that's that's true you do need to be good at sprinting if you're a field sport athlete that you know needs to do sprinting right however the the way they actually program things they're not programming for the actual sport right and that is you know the sport might last 70 80 90 seconds or 90 seconds 90 minutes you know so it might last 
for you know the guts of two hours right so you have to realize that a lot of that is going to be or a lot of the energy demands are going to be contributed to by the aerobic system so you want to have a, an unbelievable aerobic tank if you were going to be training or competing for effectively two hours right and even if you are going to be on and off in terms of using different systems you know you're not you're not doing a marathon you're not running consistently for two hours but your aerobic system is still working so you need to factor that in you know and this is seen as well when you see people do repeated sprint efforts you know especially if they don't have a a huge time between the sprints right because again like clearing that metabolic waste will say that takes three to five minutes right so again like this is why you see people that are like real sprinters like pro sprinters like that's their actual sport you know like you're not seeing some you're not seeing Usain Bolt go do a 100 meter sprint and then do it again at after a minute right because you know his his nervous system his metabolic system everything it's not fully recovered to 100 percent by the time he gets to his next sprint you know he's not going to be able to do you know an under 10 second 100 meter wait a minute and then do the exact same wait a minute and then do the exact same wait a minute and do the exact same no his performance is going to go down because you know he hasn't been able to fully restock the components of that and obviously he's used up energy through actually doing that and doing doing the training you know so again you have to factor this in that the more sprints you do I'm, i'm saying sprints and i just mean you know the 10 seconds of work you know but the more sprints you do the more the aerobic system is playing a role in this, right? So you have to factor all of that in and actually put that into your actual practice, right? So you don't just look at things from the perspective of this is what I'm doing at this exact second. You have to look at things from the perspective of, okay, at certain time points, I might need to prioritize this system, but how does that actually play out across the entirety of my sport? So again, for my sport, you know, the, the, rolling the rounds or whatever you know you're probably going to be in between three to ten minutes somewhere in in that uh three to ten minute mark and that's going to be marked by different periods of you know sometimes you're going to have to do really really explosive movements you know and scramble and whatever that lasts less than 10 seconds and then you get back to a better position and you're holding on you're you're not really moving a huge amount so you know more aerobic work uh, work from that Um, And then there might be times where, again, like you're doing quite a lot. It's 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds of all out work. And then again, you're kind of getting a bit of a break, holding on, moving position, being more strategic or whatever. So you you have to effectively, in my sport, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you've effectively got two systems, the ATP, PCR system and the anaerobic system. They're the two that are really, really important. However, if you only train those two, you only look at the snippets of the actual thing, like the, like, oh, well, it involves this, you know, you got to scramble here, you got a movement here, you got whatever. You only look at those two things, you miss the forest for the trees because you have to be able to repeatedly do that for 10 minutes, you know? So for you as an individual, you need to be able to have the aerobic base to be able to, you know, clear metabolic waste and also restock whatever uh, energetic components that are needed, right? For that 10 minutes. However, you also have to factor in that if you're competing as well, you know, you might be competing three, four, five, six, whatever times uh, in, a, in a given day, you know. So not only do you have to be able to do that over that 10 minute period, you have to be able to do that over the three, four, five, six hours or whatever it is that you're competing during that day. And that's especially important for people that ha- are, a, we'll call it a multi-event athlete, like strongman, CrossFit, that kind of stuff. You know, people will really prioritize one of these systems because you're like, that's the event I need to be good at, but then forget that they have to be able to be recovered for the next session and the next session in that given day, you know? So really important to understand all of that, right? Now, that can all seem a bit theoretical and esoteric, but we'll put it all together now in one second. We just have to go over protocol selection. You know, this has to be goal dependent, like I've been touching on. You have to analyze your sport, your given goal, your your given overall training program like what you're trying to achieve with it and um, and how you how you then set things up from that so it's all goal dependent you have to set your goals like i did before with that goal setting video you have to set your goals you have to actually be clear in what you're trying to achieve and then you can effectively program right for example if you're saying i just want to do cardio to be fit and you know contribute 
to my overall energy balance of the day. You know, I want to, you know, have 200, or 200 calories of cardio done after every training session, right? That's a different experience than from someone that's like, okay, I need to be good at X, Y, and Z energy systems and this con contribution of these energy systems for my given event. Like there are two different ways you would think about programming something then, right? So again, one of them might be just effectively like, okay, well, you can just use whatever cardio equipment you want, burn 200 calories. I'd probably go for some sort of either moderate or low intensity work in that case, right? Again, 200 calories, that's not going to fatigue you a huge amount if you're doing low intensity cardio to get to that. Um, whereas you might be like, okay, well, I'm dieting, presumably if you're doing 200 calories of cardio and you're like, oh, I'm dieting, I, 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 I want to have, or rather, I don't want to do something that's really high intensity, that's really fatiguing and, you know, leaves me feeling wrecked for the rest of the day. So again, a lower intensity might be appropriate then. Whereas if you're someone that's, you know, training for a given sport, you might need to do the, the more fatiguing, the more demanding, like neurologically and metabolically demanding work, you know, in the, ter in terms of doing like a higher intensity work, you know, even if you are burning the exact same amount of calories at that time point, you're like, you know, I need to burn 200 calories because, you know, you're maybe trying to make a weight class or whatever. And you're like, these are the energy systems I need to train. Maybe you do choose that again. This is going to be dependent on the exact situations and the given athlete, the goals, everything. So I'm obviously just giving a, a kind of somewhat brief overview of all of this. Then again, with that, I touched on it there. You have to factor in the recovery demands of this, both the metabolic side of things and the nervous system side of things. Nervous system side of things is a little bit easier to understand in terms of, you know, if you do some all out sprints, you know, this is effectively the same as doing some all out resistance training, you know, especially if you cho if you choose the right modalities for it, you know, uh, it's effectively no different. Your nervous system gets quote unquote fried as a result. Like you'll feel it more. You'll feel more fatigued from doing three all out sprints versus doing, you know, 10 minutes of walking on a treadmill, you know? So you, you have to factor that in. Same with the metabolic stuff. The experience of doing, again, three 30-second all-out sprints uh, versus doing uh, 10, 20 minutes of you know, walking, they're completely different metabolic demands, both in terms of the energy systems used, but also, which I didn't touch on in this video, which is obviously components of this, in terms of the energy substrates that are used, both carbohydrates and fats in this case. So again, like it... it it all plays in and you have to factor that into what you're trying to do and how the rest of your overall program is set up. So let's actually make this more specific and I'll tell you what I'm doing, right? So the protocols, these are the, the three protocols that I'm effectively using to target all of these systems. The ATP PCR system, I like to do 10 second sprints with 50 seconds recovery for three to five sets, right? I didn't finish this and I should seconds uh, recovery and again like three to five sets right so again anaerobic work then 30 seconds sprint 90 seconds recovery three to five sets and then the aerobic work i'm doing 30 minutes of aerobic work uh, with my heart rate roughly in the 120 to 140 beats per minute right so let's put this into actual perspective given everything that i've just told you right so this one the atp pcr system the protocol for this 10 second sprints okay so you're, you're with me so far again i said this lasts roughly whatever 8 to 12 seconds so it's bang on within that 50 seconds recovery you might be thinking okay wait hold on patrick you did say that it takes roughly two minutes for this system to be restocked i'm aware of that again what i'm trying to do is more more make my training more like i'm actually in the event that I'm training for. So I'm not actually giving complete rest for this, right? So 50 seconds, it's also fairly handy in terms of using a timer. It's like, you know, 10, yeah, it's every minute on the minute effectively, right? And um, however, what you have to account for and realize is that your first sprint and your last sprint are not going to be the same, right? So you still have to keep some sort of standards within that while also reflecting the fact that, you know, your recovery isn't a 100%. Right. So even though I'm saying this is a, a good protocol modality for that, if you are truly 
And I mean truly motivated to get the best results from training the ATP PCR system, you would train like a sprinter. You would do your 10 second all out. We'll call it even, a, keep it an RPE on it. We'll say you do an RPE 8 or 9 or whatever uh, effort on that. And then you would take two, three, five minutes break in between that, right? But again, I don't have the time for that. I don't have, that's not my goal with that. Like if my sport was only 10 seconds, yeah, maybe I, I would do that. But my sport is multi-minute, right? So I need to I, I account for that. And then when I say recovery, this is, we'll call it active recovery because I'm still moving while I'm doing this. I'm not just completely stopping. I'm still moving depending on what exact uh, exercise I select. The anaerobic one, same thing again, 30 seconds of sprinting, you know, but 90 seconds of recovery. And again, you're thinking, okay, he did say that takes whatever, three, five minutes to recover. Um, but again, I'm doing incomplete recovery so that I can also train the fact that my sport requires you to be good anaerobically, but also requires you to be able to recover that system within a multi-minute event, you know, potentially also a multi-event day. You know, and um, then the aerobic system, this one's pretty easy to understand. It's just 30 minutes or more at a heart rate of 120 to 140 beats per minute. Right. And for me, I'm going to talk you through exactly what exercises I'm choosing for these. But I want to just kind of go through a few things first before I do that. First thing you have to take into account, sports specificity. So, again, if you have a sport that allows you to train the actual implement, you know, for example, you're a cyclist it makes sense that you would train on that implement, right? Now, obviously, you want to have cross-training. That talks about a, a huge or a bigger concept of your overall program design. But if you do have a sport that you're like, this is something that I can train for, I can train for it in the actual event that I'm practicing and tra training for, then it makes sense to train that event, you know, for at least the majority of the time you're doing it. However, if you are doing a sport that, you know, potentially isn't trainable like that, um, don't try to bastardize your training to make it fit within these things. And what I mean by that is people will do some fucking crazy things and they'll try and make like pick different exercises and make them look like their sport and then try to fit them into this paradigm. And what I mean by that is someone will do like they'll, they'll choose really ineffective exercises uh, for like not actual like cardiovascular exercises, like we'll say resistance training exercises and then do them with a really low load because they're trying to make a cardio and then also try to do it really fast. And like, for example, people will be like, oh, well, I need to do, I don't know, uh, what they present in jiu-jitsu. People will make some sort of like bastardized circuit of like renegade rows and fucking, I don't know, push-ups or something. And it's like, you're, you're not really getting the, the overall cardiovascular effect that you're, you're looking to elicit from that. However, that may be appropriate in some cases, which I'll get to here now, which is the muscular specificity, because you want to use the muscles that you're you're trying to get better with. And what I mean by that is, you know, it, we talked about earlier on, like there's localized buffering effects that occur and also vascular changes that occur. They are muscle specific. We'll call them limb specific if you want. You know, so if you're going to be using your legs for your sport, it makes sense to use your legs for your cardiovascular training you know, um, because you're going to get specific adaptations. And while, yes, you do want systemic adaptations to occur across the entire body, you, you do have to keep in mind that if you are going to be making changes to your overall vascular system, like you're going to be improving, you know, the blood flow to that area, it makes sense that you would get those changes in an er into an area that you actually want to improve in. Like there's no point getting a hugely improved vascular system in your upper body when you're lower body is the one that needs it you know so again you have to be muscular specific and this is really appropriate for you will call it the the buffering stuff because again like you're going to be getting upregulation of different enzymes again mitochondrial biogenesis all that stuff in those specific muscles right now this is obviously very hard to do if your sport is effectively total body which you know quite frankly a lot of a lot of sports are you know however there are still ways that you can program around that which we'll get to in a second again impact recovery we'll call this again you have to factor that in if you are doing something that is extremely high impact you know you have to factor that into your overall fatigue management your overall recovery you know so for example if you were just looking for uh again we'll go brazilian jiu-jitsu if you're just looking to get better at brazilian jiu-jitsu and you're doing a lot of sprinting a lot of running 
to try and get better at this, you know, that might not be the most effective use of your recovery capacity because you have to look at the amount of eccentric overload you're getting in those muscles and then also the, the impacts that you're getting through those joints, you know, that, that might not be appropriate for what you're trying to achieve, you know, you might be able to get a lower impact uh, exercise push harder on it so you're still getting like a, a good cardiovascular training stimulus but you're not actually getting such a, a de- detriment to your overall recovery you know so you have to f- factor all that kind of stuff in like how recovery intensive is this exercise like how how are you going to feel after this how are you going to you know recover from this how well are you going to recover from this it all has to be taken into account again like you see this as well people like boxers or something they'll they'll use like the the heavy bag or something for their cardiovascular training and that might not be the best use of their overall recovery abilities because you know they're getting excess damage potentially to their joints to their hands whatever um that they just didn't need to get right so again you have to factor all of that in and then you want to choose exercises that are a high return on investment. What I mean by this is like you don't want to do something like I was saying earlier on. You want to be choosing things that you can barely get your heart rate up. Things that, you know, maybe you only get like three reps in in a given time point and or you, you're choosing exercises that you're you're not you're not able to actually push yourself as hard as possible or the recovery demands are too high of that exercise. Basically, you want to choose exercises that you know you can push yourself to your absolute limit, something else isn't going to be coming the, the limiting factor. It's actually appropriate for your sport or goals. And, you know, it's actually easy to do. There's no point being like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this extra kettlebell swing, tire flip, drag, whatever. And you're never going to be able to do it because it takes, you know, 30 minutes to set up, you know? So again, you have to, you have to factor all those things in when you're choosing exercises. Now, I've chosen some exercises down here, which are, you know, again, good return on investment, depending on the goals. Fan bikes. Personally, I just think these are the best return on investment because, you know, generally we'll say it's like an Airdyne or something or a Rogue, uh, whatever Rogue bike, I can't remember the name of it. And, um, you know, you're able to get the upper body moving and the lower body moving. And it's fan resisted. So the harder you push, the harder it pushes back effectively. So you're able to completely train as hard as you possibly can for whatever modality you want. So again, if you're doing 10 seconds, you can push yourself for as hard as possible for those 10 seconds. You know, same again for the 30 seconds. You can push yourself for as hard as possible for those 30 seconds, you know, and um, not like, we'll say even like something like a prowler or something which might someone might be like oh yeah i can i can use that because it's sports specific they maybe play rugby or something you know but are you going to be able to push yourself as hard as possible for that time point maybe maybe not you have to factor that in again something similar enough like a versa climber really effective a, a, an erg or a, a rowing machine really effective as well again it's effectively a fan as well with that and um, so again you you pull and you get as hard as you give, you know? Um, same with the ski erg as well, which is effectively a bastardized rowing machine. And um, spin bike as well, uh, depending on how you can tra- change the resistance with these, these may be more or less effective than, you know, an actual bike that you might see in the gym, because obviously there are differences with that. And um, same again with running, this may be appropriate, may not be appropriate. Obviously, again, if you're doing, say, the, the aerobic work, maybe it's more appropriate. Maybe it's fine. You're able to, like, just get a 30-minute run in and you're good to go, right? Same with the cross trainer. Maybe you're able to get, you know, you're, the cross trainer is probably good because you're able to get effectively all of those things done. It may not be appropriate given some cross trainer design. You like, going hard for 10 seconds may barely, you know, get, get your heart rate up or anything. So, again, you have to factor that into the overall equation. But every exercise or every cardiovascular machine has its pros and cons given the the actual modality you're trying to train you know the fan bike may be inappropriate for uh, longer aerobic work because there's too much resistance we'll say for you being able to get your heart rate up or keep it in that given time point you might have to go excessively slow to keep your heart rate at the 120 to 140 you know so again you have to choose the right tool for the right job you know, and I'm generally not a fan of using a load of different, like we'll call them resistance training exercises to try increase your cardiovascular fitness. In my mind, I'm like, there's better modalities out there. If you want to get stronger at those exercises, then do those exercises in a resistance training program rather than trying to do them in some sort of like circuit style program, you know, um, like you're going to get way better effect if you were just to hop on like a fan bike and do those modalities. 
you know like again you see this as well and obviously sport like it is specific the cardio you do is specific so you're going to get better at what you specifically do you know um so obviously there's some sports specificity sports specificity spe- sports specificity if i could speak um to that um but again, you have to realize like if you're going to get these systemic changes, they, they better be in the direction that you actually want rather than just doing some random exercises that, you know, maybe they might contribute to help with the, the exercise that you're trying to do. Anyway, guys, that's a long video. I hope I covered everything I think I did. If you have any questions and if you want to know more of what I'm doing, what we do with our clients, whatever, you can always comment below. I should actually just kind of wrap this up and tell you exactly what I'm doing again with periodization with this. I do four weeks of the anaerobic work. So 30 seconds, uh, 30 seconds of work, 90 seconds of rest. And I do that three times. And I do that at the end of resistance training. And I do that four times per week. Two of those sessions after my lower body sessions, I use the fan bike, the assault bike uh, in my gym. Uh, and then on my upper body days, I do the ERG, right? So the, the rowing machine, right? And in those two other days where I'm not doing resistance training, I do, I actually focus on getting that aerobic system working and I do like a, a 30 minute walk. Now I say a walk, but it's, it's pretty much like the fastest you could possibly walk. You know, and there's a lot of hills in my area so I can effectively just use those to get my heart rate up rather than having to go for a run because we've discussed this before on the podcast, my calves, which are non-existent, always feel it feel the worst for wear after it so you know for me getting a a a high intensity walk in does the job allows me to keep my heart rate where i want it you know and as i said before in the last one you know as we come into summer which is seems like a a while away i will be transitioning to getting two extra brazilian jiu-jitsu brazilian jiu-jitsu sessions in so that'll effectively take over from the aerobic work that I'm doing, right? And now for the majority of people, if you were to think about doing this, what I would suggest for the majority of people is doing aerobic work preferentially, right? And I would continue doing that until you have a resting heart rate below below 60 at least, but ideally below 50, right? That's going to help the vast majority of people improve their health, improve their fitness for their sport, or just in general life, right? So that's where I would put the majority of my focus, right? If there is some specificity that you want to look look to achieve in terms of your sport or whatever, or you're just like, I don't have the time to be doing a 30 minute, you know, plus uh, aerobic session, you could then do some of the, the higher intensity work, you know, right? Um, and again, as I said, I'm doing four weeks of the, the 30, 90. Then after that, I'm doing four weeks of the 10 seconds all out. 50 seconds rest and again i do that five times still the same exercises and again this this goes along with how i'm periodizing my training overall in terms of four weeks of the higher reps which coincide with the anaerobic work and then four weeks of the lower reps which coincide with the the we'll call it the alactic or the atp pcr work right anyway guys that is it this is a long enough video so i'm going to wrap it up here again if you do have any questions just drop them below or join the facebook group and ask them in there.